Hey everyone and welcome to episode 20 of Robbie's Backstage Bands. Today I'm joined by Andrew Lansall. Hi, how are you doing? Very good, 20. That's incredible. That's an yeah. incredible achievement. Good for you. Thank you so much. It's been a, a nice round number. I feel it's a it's a nice round number. Twenty two point zero. I like yeah. it. You've made it at number twenty. You're in you're in you're in the top twenty. In it in it in at number twenty. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a good place to be. So how have you been coping with all this awful? You know, um, one year ago, I think last night we opened the Sound of Music in Dublin. Yeah. And uh, which was the second time I'd done that role. And still in contact, we're all, as a cast, we're very close. And even even when I did it the first time round, playing Captain Von Trapp, the first time around 2016, mm -hmm. I literally spoke to some of the some of the kids in the cast yesterday. We're still, it, it's one of those shows that stays inside you. It's a beautiful show. Is it the best? It's one of the best. If it's not the best, it's the most eternal. Certainly. And um, we opened to a bang in Dublin, and we'd had five. Uh, and credit, I think we did four, three, three weeks in Dublin, then and uh, maybe uh, another week in Derry, and we flew back in that storm, oh. and then we did a few more weeks, and then in March uh, we were due to open on the Tuesday, the 16th or 15th, I can't remember exactly, um, in Milton Keynes, and I live in Liverpool, but I've got a place in London, and yeah. uh, uh, I'd left my stuff there because I thought, while I suspected there would be some stopping. I mm -hmm. thought we'd be going back. We all thought yeah. we'd be going back. And Bill Kenwright, uh, who I'm about to do, I think my twelfth contract with, oh, wow. uh, had seven tour had seven tours out that Monday, and the trucks and and, and builders Tuesday to Saturdays, eight shows Tuesday to Saturdays, yeah. and the sets were being built. The trucks were out, and literally that Monday night, the shutters came down. Not just on BKL stuff or our show, Sound of Music. And, but for the whole industry. Everything, yeah. And so it's just, I mean, it seems like so long ago now, but it's nearly a year. Yeah. We're coming up to a year in, lo in lockdown. And so, um, and I hope we get to do the Sound of Music again. I hope some of those kids can do it again. Unfortunately, kids have a habit of growing. And so um, uh, perhaps they'll be jiggling around different parts, but it's it's definitely a show that I'll, I will be returning to, but it was very sad to stop. Yeah. Um, there was venues we wanted to play and uh, I personally, I felt very lucky through lockdown with what we have anyway and also what I've been able to do. I've been looking to do some television and some filming and stuff and a couple of plays, but uh, I had a year mapped out for the first time really since Corey. I had a year knowing what I was going to be doing, one show after another. And then, oh, and I thought I thought something would go tits up. I didn't expect it to be the entire not, world. Not everything. Um, and so it's been really, you know, I've seen, I mean, I've kept very busy with uh, online and I say, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, I produce stuff and all that. And so, but I've seen some pretty dark things out there as well happening with the industry and a, a certain yeah. lack of love. Um, like we were talking before we started. Uh, are you, have you frozen there? No, it seems as though you frozen. I don't know what's going on here. Um, not, not too sure. Oh, dear. Right, you, yeah, okay, you're moving again now. Moving. Yeah, are you editing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you crop it? Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, and it's been terrible. And, and I think, you know, there's been, as while there has been some support, the lack of planning or the lack of follow up, I think it's just been, Definitely. well, it's been barren. And like we were saying before we started, you know, you can, you can turn the lights out, but you can't kill the passion, which is why things like this are very important. I truly believe that, that people just doing stuff, doing stuff all the time. And, I'm always encouraged to see people putting songs out and streams and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, and so th there is a glimmers now. And like I said the other day, you know, uh, there are glimmers on the horizon. It's our job there to turn is. them into stars. And I, th and I think we can. We can, absolutely. So the first sort of questions I've got for you today are how you got to where you are. So the first one is really brief. Take it however you want it. Uh, what is the journey of how you got to where you are today? Well, in my, in my career? Yeah. In my job? Journey. Well, I started uh, around about your age, a bit younger, uh, and I um, I used to perform in old people's homes and uh, um, and, and in local theatre. I classed local amateur theatre very much as my training at English Drama School, and that was a different it was a different route for me. And I started my own theatre company with my oh, friend wow. Paul, and so and then we used to go to prisons and old people's homes and do shows and stuff, and we put on various productions and meantime back at the ranch I was being an extra on telly in Coronation Street 
for a long time and that's why it's weird when I went in as a regular you know been having been an extra and people were as nice to me then as they were when I went back as a oh, that's principal and so it's an incomparable place no one's bigger than the cobble and it's probably not my happiest job I mean it was a finite job but I, I wasn't there yeah. that long but um and so uh youth theater local theater was very much my training I, I classed that and then what happened is I did a play in uh, in Southport uh, it was a, it was, it was an amateur production, but it was a very good production of Equus by Peter Schaffer. And, um, and then I was asked to go and audition for that in Los Angeles because somebody was doing it in LA and my friend was making films out there. So I kind of stayed with him for a while and, um, I was an extra in Newsies and stuff like that. I did a lot of cabaret out there. And, um, and so, uh, because I was cast in Equus in America, even though it never went on, that kind of found its way back to the UK. And from that, I got um, a film with Julie Walters uh, called Wide Eyed and Legless. Wow. Julie Walters was my mum. Jim Broadbent was my dad. Not bad. What a film. One. And, and that led directly to, uh, and Thora Heard was my grand. And that led oh. directly to um, me getting cardiac arrest, which was a, a very okay. controversial and, and uh, medical drama written by Jeff Mercurio, who of course now writes Bodyguard and just got an MBE last week. And so, um, and that was me and Telly, and I guess yeah, I've kind of, back. you know, yeah, and I've kind of drifted in Telly, and 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 you know, and quite a lot of controversial roles, and and I've always sought those in Hillsborough and Queer as Folk. Even Neil Manson in the bill was very controversial when he started, and plodded on. And um, I was uh, I in 1998 my. Uh, my dad, my granddad, and, and my gran all died, and my best friend's sister and a very close friend. It was just this incredibly insane year of grief. And uh, I was um, jobbing. I was doing bits and pieces, Liverpool One and uh, and different series and making a living. And um, I wanted to go home. I wanted a reason to go home. So I went back to uh, the youth theatre, which I started in, uh, and I directed... A production of Grand Hotel. It was the first time it had been done as a as, as a youth theatre. We had to wow. fight to get the rights, and I wanted a new choreographer, and that uh, choreographer was Louise, who became my wife, oh. and um, we've been together 22, 23 years. And so that's, that's the kind of how I got to where. And and through that, you know, I was living in London and working in London and doing shows like Bad Girls and The Vice and work at Chichester and the West End. You know, doing stuff, working stuff. And because of the cardiac arrest success, I had a little bit of a profile and a little bit of a choice, but um, not a huge amount, but enough to get by. And then wanted to move in with Lou. And so we came back to Liverpool. We came came to live in Liverpool, where we are now. And um, within within the year, I got the bill. So wow. I, we had to go back, back to London. Oh, and, so, and then I did seven years in that show, yeah. And... Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the bill led to Corey and then a relation, uh, working relationship with Bill Kenwright. And um, I, I desperately, I always kind of want to go back to theatre when you do a long run on telly. Yeah. And I had 10 years on telly. And so I went back and did a play called Epstein, The Man Who Made the Beatles, which we did in Liverpool. Yeah. And that went to the West End. And um, uh, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of school here. I never know what you're allowed to say in these things. But basically, I, mm -hmm. I invited a lot of producers to the opening night. I was very proud of piece it's a two-hander uh with uh, myself and a brilliant young actor looks a bit like you called will finlayson oh, living fine. in canada now produced by bill elms who i'm still working with now and uh and and directed by jen jen hayes and, and i was very proud of it and so i just wanted people to see it and so in we invited you know producers to the opening night and that kind of paid off and bill and kenroy and i had known each other through everton and oh, coronation right. street and mutual friends and so but i'd never worked with him people always assumed i'd worked with bill and i hadn't no. and then as we finished epstein he said do you want to do this little tour for me and that became the first of many and really? uh so i was in the middle of sound of music last year for bill and we were due to go on to Scylla, bring Scylla back um with yeah. sheridan smith this time and um we will be doing that later in the year and we did a little clip for it for the royal bright yeah. performance did you see it? Yeah. Great. Did you see it in Newcastle? Did you, did you see it, Scylla? I haven't seen Scylla properly, but I've seen oh, it. Oh, it'll, it'll be coming back. It'll right. be coming back. Yeah. That'll be it was back. great. And so to answer your question, I think that's how I got here today. Yeah. You said it was going to be short. 
Are the, are the questions short? Are the answers short? I can keep them short. Don't worry. I can it's shut up. up. To you. It's up to you. Just um, the other question on, on on that sort of situation is: Did you ever have any other career paths in mind that you wanted to go down, or is it always this? Oh, absolutely. I was going to be right winger for Everton. There's oh. nothing surer. And I'm still waiting at 50. So, you know, I mean, oh. yeah. And so I only get to do it on FIFA now, um, <laughs> on PlayStation. But um, no, I, I, I was sick as a kid. So any kind of physical thing was always going to be a difficult approach. I, I probably did have plans, but it was very gradual because being a, you know, as a, as a child actor, my first telly was I was 14. Uh, yeah. And then all the stuff with song, the, the, the youth theatre and the, the, the TIE stuff that I set up with Paul and um, I just kind of plodded on. It, just, it was gradual. I didn't train, clearly, I hear you shout, and the only, I've done voice work and stuff, but everybody's route's different and I think it's very important yeah. to remember that. Everybody's, never compare yourself to anybody else because there's no one else like you. Right. And, okay. um, you know, you, you carve your own uh, route in the sand I think yeah I think it's so not great. really no I mean not really I've always I've, I mean I'm not uh, it, it just happened for me really it just it was gra yeah. very gradual it wasn't overnight when cardiac arrest went ballistic and I was 23 24 lead role in this massive series and um, I'd been doing it for like eight years so it wasn't really overnight but uh, I mean the plus side of the only plus side I can see with the lockdown is being being able to be at home for a while and yeah, to take stock yeah. and for us all to realize our principles and what really matters to us you know yeah, absolutely so now we're just going to get into a brief sort of jumping into sections of your career so the first thing i want to mention and you can just lead the way with this is the bill what was that like how hard work yeah hard work and i'd done it a couple of times as a, as a guest and um it was my agent really who encouraged me to to go up for it because i'd moved just yeah. moved back up to Liverpool and we were doing up this little house and um my uh anybody who knows me knows I'm very dog doggy and we have a dog uh Ollie yes and the, uh, the, he's a yellow lab and the and the yellow lab before Ollie was Chester and Chester was and, you know my best mate he's been he's been gone a long time now but and so um the the, the bill um there used to be a rule I've just done casualty as a guest, okay. one episode, I think it's on next week or the week after, depends when this oh, goes really? out. And um, but playing a copper, funnily enough, with another actor from the bill. Oh, and uh, um, oh. I don't know if that, I'm so sorry, anyway, I, I, we've done it. And <laughs> whenever you get asked to do guests in shows, you always ask, the first question is, does that rule me out as a regular? Because I love casualty. Yeah. I love casualty. And, um, and they said, no, you can come back within the year. And the bill used to have this thing, it was 18 months. If you did a guest, on the bill, you couldn't be a regular for 18 months, right? So I was offered to play a baddie, two, two episodes, and like everybody else, you just said, yes, yeah, I'll do that, lovely, great, thank you very much. And so I was gonna play this baddie. It was an absolutely true story, God is my witness. And so I was down to play a baddie and I took Chester out to the park, Camp Hill up the road here, and um, it was the season. And so he was on a lead, but there was a, couple of bitches running past who weren't and so he pulled me oh, out he pulled me like that and he pulled my back and i'm quite fit and i've got a good back but he pulled my back out right and it really really hurt like you know going dizzy hurt couldn't walk could not walk on my back and i had a costume fitting on the monday oh, this was the saturday i had a costume fitting on the saturday so I rang my agent said listen i've got a problem here um i can't walk I, I'm, I feel all right, but I can't walk. And another actor, Simon O'Brien, lived opposite, and he kept bringing sandwiches for me. Anyway, and so um, um, the week was coming, and they said, don't worry about the costume fitting. We've got your measurements. We start filming Monday. Oh, wow. A week on Monday. Couldn't do it. So um, we told them I had food poisoning because a bad back didn't sound very cool. And I couldn't do the job. And I was gutted because we needed the work. And, I yeah. looked at, you know, the bill was the bit. It was a good part, too two parts of playing a gangster so that was that about six weeks later we get a call saying that they're developing the new head of cid the new di and they want to see you for it like they saw everybody so you know i mean it was like really and eventually i was lucky enough to get it and i took a risk with the casting you i, I auditioned for him very differently and 
even on the day of my network screen test because uh, you know the like the powers that be decide and all that yeah uh i took a risk because he was written neil manson was written a lot more gruff a lot more kind of you know uh bulldoggy mm-hmm. and i thought well i'm not going to be able to do that and so i just took him right down and that worked and we did him for seven years you know and Thank changed you. our lives yeah. But had Chester not pulled my back out, I would have done the guest. Yeah. And by doing that guest role, I would not have been allowed no. uh, to go up for a regular. So it's just like fair. so it was it was that horny bitch running past the, the <laughs> dog that um, changed our life and took us around the world and set us up. You know. But that's basically what, what it's a true story. Dog? I mean, I'd like to think I would have ended up in the bill at some point anyway, but. Oh, yeah. Um, it it was a it was very hard work. He was a very hard character to play. He was very intensive. He was a gift. I was also on my own a lot. I don't mean that melancholy or sad. I mean people lived in London, and I didn't, and so I was down there, you know. And so I would learn my lines on set at the end of the day. Eventually, we bought a flat around the corner, which was great. And so um, I, I would, me and Graham Cole would often be doing the tours for the competition winners because I was there on my own. So, Andrew, would you do another tour? Yeah, I'll do a tour. So um, yeah, it, yeah, it was very hard work, and it was a long time ago. We finished it over ten years ago, and I think because it's on all the time, people think you know it's still uh, constant. Uh, but no, ten years. But I'm very grateful to it. It was it was a good gig. I bet. And the next thing, just to jump over to Coronation Street. Well, that followed straight after the oh, bill. It was it was literally um, it was mo- it was about a month afterwards. It was wow. very very soon. That's quick. And so, uh, yeah, there was a couple of things. I was very fortunate. And because um, they sat me down and said to me, uh, literally, this is going to be the most controversial character we've ever had. And you're not going to say no to that, are you? I mean, in hindsight, I might have waited and moved into the street because what I didn't know was I was going to love it so much. Obviously hated the character and hated what he did and who he was, but it was a gift as an actor. Mm not a single ego in that show and no one's bigger than the cobbles and I, and i really enjoyed it i was working with superb actors absolutely ali king sally dinover gwen taylor kim i mean you know real you know proper heavyweights yeah. of soap and uh, and still all friends today and um and i think i enjoyed it because i knew it was finite i knew frank was going to die i knew what he was going to do uh, the only thing that would change was the way he died. Was that was different, but um, and we filmed different endings and stuff. And so I really, really enjoyed the role. I have to admit. And it, you know, now I probably think, God, I wish I could have stayed there because it was so great. Okay. But it's a parallel universe because I wouldn't have done it at that time had it been open ended. Because I'd just done seven years on another soap and wanted to come yeah. out. So it was. Uh, I, I still watch it. Still love it. Still very grateful to it. Absolutely. So probably my, probably my happiest job. Definitely. And, it, you know, you can't say it to someone in the street, obviously in Coronation Street, and most likely they will have heard of it. You know what I mean? It's not like... But it's funny, you know, I mean, touring, because I've since 2014, I've mostly toured, not always toured, but yeah. mostly toured. Um, and it's how you get recognised. I mean, in the north, it's mostly Corrie, and in the south, it's mostly the Bill. Mostly, but it can be, it can be, as I say, queer as folk. It can be, it can be city centre. It can be something else, or it can just be a name. And it's, it was funny. I was, uh, we go to the Middle East a lot as a family, and uh, we were playing football uh, on the beach, like you know, ten aside, proper match. Yeah. And this lady walks straight onto the beach, straight onto the pitch. Very lovely, you know, walked straight up to us. So game kind of stopped, and she had a thingy out for a selfie and you, you would bet your life it's D.I. Manson or it's Frank Foster and it wasn't she'd been to see Scylla in Milton Keynes so you just never know what, and I was thrilled I was thought I told Bill I was oh. actually thrilled that you know that, that you know you get you can get stopped for theatre theatre is just as important yeah. as television if not more so of course That's you know true. but it's just a different discipline so, yeah and of course there are theatre actors who are constantly working and are honoured by the Queen and have houses across the world just from their theatre work but just, just because yeah. on telly you know they're not as recognisable and uh, yes please that sounds great. <laughs> Definitely. So the next one it is theatre, mm. Epstein, The Man Who Made The Beatles. Yeah. 
out of nowhere. It was a um, big Beatle fan looking, left Coronation Street, had a few choices and wanted to be at home and all the usual and read the script. And um, um, it was going to be done as part of uh, Homotopia and the reopening of the re recently renamed Neptune Theatre as the Epstein Theatre. Oh. And when I read it, in the same way as when I read Brian Clough, uh, Damn United, I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I have no idea, but I wanted to do it. Yeah. And Bill and Jen found Will Finlayson and uh, something just happened between us. And yeah. Epstein became, Brian Epstein became a massive part of my life literally overnight. Yeah. And um, he still is. He, he continues to be. He very much so with stuff that's happening later in the year. And, you know, he was gone at 32, that man. I'm 50, but, you know, I'm still kind of playing him. And we did him in the Royal Variety Show with Sheridan. Yeah. And, and um, that play um, went to the West End. And then that led, Bill Kenwright told me the opening night of Epstein in the West End, the opening night of Epstein in the West End, he said, we're doing a musical about Scylla. And this was, this was before um, uh, the, the, the Jeff Pope series yeah. was green lit and stuff. And so I, you know, I went up for that and of course, but, um, uh, and he said, you know, I want you to play Brian Epstein in that. And if, what, I think three years later, and we've done that. We did that tour three times. So Brian continues, and then the Royal Variety, and then later in the year, uh, there's a project about him which I'm involved in, and oh, Silla wow. will be coming back. And so, so yeah, I mean, this guy was incredible. He was a guy. He was. He discovered the Beatles. He had a hand in physically had a hand in changing the world, and no internet, no Zoom, no red button, just him on a phone, and he had the balls to wait before it was right to go to America, you know, and. Uh, he was a fascinating, flawed, addictive, and brilliant man. And I feel a responsibility to him now. And that is absolutely down to Bill Elms and Jen Hayes and asking me to do that play in Liverpool, which we did. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I feel very close to him. And I've questioned whether I should carry on playing him. I'm too old and all that stuff. And, um, but I've kind of accepted it now. Uh, yeah. I've accepted that he's as much a part of my life oh, oh. as... <laughs> As the I Manson or Frank Foster, or yeah, if not more so, really. Yeah. And obviously, we were very turning in, in, in Scylla to. Um... We hope to. We should have been doing it now. Um, yeah. We'd have been doing it at the end, end of last year into this year. Uh, Sheridan's very busy, but, yeah. uh, you know, the reaction to the um, Royal Variety performance was fantastic. And oh, it was um, it's very much hopeful that we will be bringing it back. Fingers crossed. Soon. It'll happen. Yeah, it will. Yeah. It won't be. It won't be this side. I think anything this side of summer. Summer is questionable at the minute, but oh yeah, uh, this will be later in the year. You know, hopefully, so. hopefully that side of summer will get. Fingers something. crossed. And even if I'm not in it, I'll be going to watch it. It's brilliant. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and so the last little sort of thing to jump onto before we get to the fans' questions is the sound of music. I love the sound of music. I know. Yeah. You're probably a bit old for Friedrich now. You'd be coming up for Rolf though, right? Can you dance? Yeah, uh, yeah slightly. No, no, no. Let's try that again. Can you dance? Yeah. Yes, of course I can. Yes. And then you get the lessons before the audition. Um, so, yeah, you say yes to everything. Yes. Um, it absolutely just... Uh, um, did an interview recently, you know, Tresor Magazine. I'm sure you've read that, you know, um, you know that my online magazine. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they said, you know, about which which was the parts. And you go through them and, you know, I mean, Brian Clough was a gift. and You know, stuff I've done on telly, which has mattered to me greatly and all that. And But I keep going back to Van, Captain Von Trapp, not just because of the relationships and friendships that are made in it. It's just so full of hope and so full of love. Yeah. And, you know, I, I played him now twice. And every time I finish playing him, I know I'm going to go back to him or I hope. I'd be able to go back to him. Sometimes you have to wait and it clashes and whatever. But I was doing a play in Derby uh, playing Brian Clough for the Damn United. And I was, it was a very intense, very heavy play, very difficult role. And Bill rang up and said, how do you fancy playing Captain Von Trapp? And I think uh, I think I thought about it for about one second and oh, literally fell in, love, fell in love with the, the role and the, and the message and the music. And as I say, you get, it's a family. BKL has a, a way of making a family anyway yeah. and um i love it sound of music is all about family and hope 
and you know getting over the mountain these things that we so i, I mean if you want to if you if you want a message in a musical for 2021 it's the sound of music oh, music you know you stick together the bad guys are coming we've got to get away but we're going to stick together we're going to stick together you know and uh yeah, I mean, Howard Samuels, who's played Max with me uh, twice, he'd be great to do this, by the way. Um, oh, well. Uh, you know, we spoke to him the other day, and, you know, we're, we're, we're always in contact. The Sound of Music family are always in contact. Well, and, uh, it, 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 uh, it's amazing. It's when I went back to Von Trapp, I'd forgotten how big a sing it was. I kind of just remembered it as, oh, I just sing Edelweiss and Cry, and that'll be all right. But I'd forgotten how big a score it is, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And the musical director texted me yesterday, you know, so... I, I, I can't put it into words how much that show means to me. You know, it's, uh, if somebody rang me up and said, you know, do you want to do Sound of Music for a year? I'd say, yeah. And there's not much I'd say that to. Yeah. You know, uh, I, think, I think anybody would say yes to a year's work now anyway, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there's something in that music. There's something in that story. Uh, I've had worked with two fantastic Marias, brilliant Marias. Yeah, um, very, very different. Um, uh, Lucy O'Byrne and uh, Emily Fleming, you know, just brilliant. And so it was sad when the curtain came down on it mid tour, and particularly yeah. for the kids, you know. Oh. And uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, still in contact, still friends. And uh, what was the question? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that, but now speaking of questions, let's move on to the right. questions. So I always pick five the what? questions. The oh, the fan questions. questions. Yeah. I'm surprised you had five. Uh, I always I always choose five, just so it doesn't go on too long. The first fan's question is from Lindsay, and Lindsay has asked, what was it like working with Sheridan Smith on the Royal Variety performance? Um, we met uh, putting on our frocks and our microphone. We had half an hour performance. We were obviously aware of each other somewhat. And, oh, yeah. you know, I and um, we... You know, we worked on that little scene together and I felt like I'd known her for years. I met Billy, wow. uh, the baby and the fella, and oh, uh, wow. um, we had a great day. And it was a very surreal day. Royal Variety Show. I mean, it's, you know, the only time I get asked to do it, there's no audience and there's no royalty. But hey, um, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers, you know. Uh, and it was just bizarre. I was on stage there's Michael Ball, Gary mm -hmm. Barlow, and, you know. And uh, Sheridan's been brilliant, <clears throat> and wow. kept, you know, capturing in a in a very short space of time. And I think it was a good actor, and um, you know, I was thrilled to work with her, and thrilled absolutely, uh, uh, you know, of her, you know, of her encouragement and um, instant friendship. She's a star. She is. She's a real. She's a real star. Yeah, absolutely. The second fan's question is from Jordy, and Jordy's asked, "Do you still keep in touch with anyone from the bill?" Yeah, um, um, quite quite a lot of the crew, funnily enough. But um, the, I suppose I mean there was a lot of actors, and uh, yeah. I had a message from Sally Sally uh, Rogers um, yesterday. Um, the people I see, I speak to the most are Sam Callis because I've worked with him twice. He played Stone, uh, Jason Barnett. Uh, who played uh, Eddie, the forensic chap? We're very good friends, and he's in Bridgerton actually. Lucy oh. Speed, and a lot, a lot of the crew. And uh, I was recently doing an episode of Casualty. Now I'm not, I'm, I haven't mentioned this because they asked me not to publicly, but it's coming up, so I can't really see. Uh, and so I, w I did an episode of Casualty recently with Cat Simmons, uh, who oh. we worked opposite each other in. In uh, of course, you know Cat Simmons from come from away, and you know and Nancy and. Uh, Oliver, incredible, and and we were filming down in Cardiff during the lockdown, and I think there was nine members of the crew from the bill who were working on that particular oh, wow. episode. Wow! So it was nice. It was a bit of a yeah. There was nine. I think we counted all together. In, that is really in, cool, actually. Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, to go back to people and you'd open the door and go, "Hi, Nick. Oh, the guy that used to do my makeup." You know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, to answer, yes, we were all. I mean, often you know we see each other at. Not so much reunions, but you know, when people pass away and stuff like that. But um, yeah, again, it's over ten years since we finished filming. So, uh, but yeah, we're all still in contact. A lot of us are, anyway. Yeah. And the next question is from Leah, and Leah asks, "Do you think post COVID the Bill cast might do a meet and greet?" Seems to be a common question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I've done a few talks online during lockdown, and um, 
I don't think it's a secret now that uh, I was involved in a, a huge 10 year convention, which was going to happen at the end of August last year on the day that the final episode was broadcast, but COVID, we couldn't do it. Um, and so, yeah, you know, but, uh, you know, people can always come to the theatres that we're playing at. You know, there's oh, yeah. usually a dozen dozen show uh, actors from the bill working in theatre, always come down and say hello. We're always happy to sign the stuff. Post COVID is going to be a different world, but um, I'm always for reunions. Yeah, why not? Yeah, absolutely. The next question is from Polly, and Polly asked, "Was there any particular storyline that you struggled with in anything? Any any storylines that you struggled with?" Um, people get asked, ask me that quite a lot because of my face, but no, because you're an actor playing a role. Oh, yeah. And I think it's daft to worry too much about it. I mean, I've had some very, very controversial storylines and difficult ones yeah. to play. But when you when you're doing a show like The Bill, you know, to use a to use a theatre analogy, you know, sometimes you're the butler holding, you know, the tray in the background, and sometimes you're the leading man, and that can happen over the space of a day in an episode. And so it's important that you embrace everything in front of you. Never wish stuff away. Uh, you know, you can be doing an episode about stolen beer mats or you could be doing an episode about the murder of a politician and they're both as important and yeah. so you may not always like what's in front of you but you grab it and you embrace it and um you work hard it's much more interesting i can't think of anything um i think early on with cardiac arrest when we were still finding the feet of andrew colin i was very yeah. uh, i was i was i was Mikiro wrote that as we said before and I didn't want him to be a cliched Christian character I didn't want him to become too uh you know uh, mousy or kind of um cliched as I say and so we worked yeah. quite hard on 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 doing that I always you know I always talk about if anybody's ever interested in listening it's always interesting to find something a bit more surprising in a script or a part you know uh, swimming against the tide and looking outside the box a bit I've yeah. always tried to do that with my work um it's nice to be able to definitely i mean it, people who get fussy over roles as well it just you know you work for is work at the end of the day but also, well, right now it's work yeah <laughs> exactly no ne yeah never more so but i think you're right you know and also you know there's you no know, small parts and you know, all that all those kind of oh, yeah. things that people say it's kind of true and um i watched the uncle vanya broadcast uh, last night um i was in bits at the end of it and that was a perfect example of how the mediums can, uh, you know, you're talking about a, a che Chekhov play, which has been adapted recently, a play that was for the West End, which had to shut down, so they filmed it. And so it's a whole spectrum of, 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 um, of mediums and, 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 and ways of telling a story. And I thought it was beautiful. Uh, and so, um, and every single one of them was so on it and passionate and caring. And there's nothing worse um, than people who don't give it all. No. And you never know who's watching. You exactly. never know who's watching. You know, if you're in the chorus and it's that matinee and you're hungover and you can't be asked, like we've all been, we've all been there. That's the one, that's the matinee Steven Spielberg's going to be in. You know, that's the matinee Kenneth Branagh's going to be casting. Just don't take the risk, don't you know. And so it's only a couple of hours. You have to listen. You can muck around. We can all. I'm terrible. I'm terribly naughty, but hopefully always off camera, as it were. <clears throat> but um, yeah, do do the homework. Do the homework. Be willing to compromise. Definitely. And the my next two uh, bench box is from Sally. And Sally has asked, "Did you have a corpse during a take?" Yeah, so that's Sally Rogers from the Bill who's asked that. Yeah. Uh, Sally Rogers, who played DC. That Bastards was the moment for me. I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I answered it as I did on Twitter. Never, ever, ever. Me and her never, ever laughed once. It was deadly serious <laughs> all the time. I remember my favourite memory of Sally, of which there are many, um, was we used to have, in our dressing rooms down the corridor, they'd have one of those, like, what do you call them, like post boxes, you know, like stick out, and they'd put the script in. And so you'd get your script for the next day or the changes or your letters or your mail or whatever it was, you know. And I was going into my dressing room and Sally was going into hers, picking out. And she went, what fresh hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> and every time I get a script now, I always say, what fresh hell is this? So, yeah, <laughs> she's, a, she's, a, she's a talent. 
Uh, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So we laughed a lot. Yeah. We laughed a lot. And we laughed all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's the best thing to do. It's, yeah. It's fun. So the very last thing today, you're almost there, is a little quiz. I like, I like to quiz people. However, this one, I just. What decided, fresh hell is this? Exactly. I decided to quiz you on Sound of Music as it was most recent. Oh, shit. So your first, you first. No, it wasn't. No. I've done three plays since then. I did a play in lockdown. You've not lockdown. asked me about all the stuff I'm doing. Lockdown. Um, you, you, lockdown, I did a play called Swan Song. I did uh, Casualty and I've done concerts and I've got oh. a tour of Swan Song coming up. And me and my son are doing a play at Windsor with Will Young. You should be oh, asking all these yeah. promo called A Thousand Clowns. And then we're taking Swan Song out on the road, hopefully. And I'll be doing the Joe Longthorne long book, song book again. And then we'll be back to Silla. So there. Never a shame. So no, it wasn't, it wasn't the last thing. This is my excuse. That's his, I'll give it a go. This is their excuse. Well, if you ever want to do another concert, you know, just hit me up. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, you're really concert. good. I said that. Yeah. yeah is, 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 is that your plan then? You're planning to go into musical theatre? Is that your, what Well, hoping to be a musical theatre performer, yeah. But while, while obviously nothing's really happening. Doesn't matter. You do what you're doing now. So, no, yeah, music. Yeah. And so, what, you'll go leave school and then college and drama school? Is that your plan? Yeah, hopefully. But from today, I think you don't have to go to drama school. No. Uh, compare yourself to nobody. I mean, there's some good schools your way as well in Newcastle, which is just the best city. Yeah. You know, I've got the best memories. The only time we didn't go on stage for Scylla was uh, when we were in Newcastle. We got snowed in. There was. Uh, only, so only there we, up now. Only with that. Yeah, there. Oh, I love it up there. Uh, I love it in Newcastle. I, I, if it wasn't so far up and cold, I'd probably live there. It's uh, it's the best. I mean, you've got everything in Newcastle. The art is incredible. The people are brilliant. It's condensed. The theatres are brilliant. The football yeah. team's a bit dodgy, but yeah, they've yeah. got a nice kit. Definitely. I mean... All right, go on. Let's do the sound of music oh, quiz yeah. and embarrass myself. Let's do it. So your first question, you should be able to answer mm. this one, is can you name yeah. all of the Von Trapp children? Yeah. Go for it. Oh, do you want me to? Yes. Uh, okay, gosh, right. So uh, I might not do it in order. That's fine. Um, so it's Liesl, Friedrich, uh, uh, Martha, Brigitte, um, Kurt, and Gretel, and uh, Louisa. Yeah, there you go. That's the first question. Whew, complete. That, that was, was hard. The, the next yeah. one's pretty easy. Okay, so question two. What is the name of Austria's national flower that the Captain Von Trapp sings about? Oh, Hard question, yeah. that one, isn't it? Mm. Is it? Is it the rose? I'm not quite sure. It's a real brain. Can I tell, would you like to hear a story about singing Edelweiss, which I've sang all over <laughs> love the it. country and sang, sang in, and, it's tr and he won't mind me telling this. There's a very talented young actor called Zach Pyle. I mean, the kids in that make the talent. It's breathtaking, you know, um, I mean, kids went on to play Annie in the West End, Ruby you know, Stokes. And, wow. Uh, phenomenal. And um, um, very, very close. I've got two stories for you, actually, if you're interested. But um, uh, Zach Pyle has just done a, a radio drama with um, the likes of uh, Brian Cox and John Malkovich and my son Isaac. Anyway, and so... Um, he he's got a band called Princess the Kings. You might have heard of them, and uh, they're just a great family and really talented. Anyway, he won't mind me doing this because it's a few years ago now. <laughs> and um, so we had three teams of kids touring around with us, right? Uh, three teams of six. The girl who played Lisa is always an adult, and so um, and so there's three teams of six. And sometimes you get a few here, the dogs coming in now. Sometimes you get a few oh. dropouts and I put on the whole it's the six. And so during the end of the run. Uh, each, each team would come to an end and then there would be uh, um, another one to finish it and another one to finish it. So we were in Wimbledon and it was Zach's teams. That picture I tweeted the other day was that team. I can't remember if it was what, what the team was called, Bells, I think. And um, uh, he was upset. It was, it was the, it was, it, Edelweiss is massively emotional anyway. There are times really? when you sing it. You know, because you're standing in front of the swastika and you think about what's happening in the world, you know, what's happening, what we've just seen right now, Yeah. you know, across the ocean, you know, and it's just like, geez, you know, you, we've got to be together. We've got to love. And... Anyway, so it's an emotional song. 
And so uh, it was Zach's last night and it was in Wimbledon. It wasn't the last night, but it was his last night of the show. And we were singing Edelweiss and he was in bits. It was really emotional. I'm getting emotional thinking about it. And because it was just a, such a happy, incredible experience to do that show. Mm. And it's a show that does good business and there's always a big stage door and stuff, you know. And so I remember, uh, you know, that famous tableau with the two, with, with uh, Maria and the captain and the kids singing Edelweiss, you know. And I was literally holding Zach up. He was so upset, you know, to come to the end of it. And I was like, oh, it's so emotional and all that kind of stuff. And I was telling my wife and I was telling people about it afterwards. So he really got upset. He really got emotional. He really was in the part and stuff, you know. So three nights later, it's the last night. You know, it's another team and we're finishing. We're finishing in Wimbledon. We've been on tour for about six months. And it comes to Edelweiss and the roles are reversed. I was in absolute bits. Couldn't yeah. sing. And the other little boy playing was holding me up. It was like the roles had literally reversed. So all everything he was feeling uh, as the character, as you know, uh, as the actor finishing the job, just kind of transferred on me, and I couldn't sing it. Couldn't sing it. Everyone's probably probably like, he's method actor. It's like no, it's just. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was uh, very very special. And my first Gretel. Uh, this is a this is a good bit of musical theatre gossip if you want it, um, or story anyway. My first Gretel was. Um, a little girl called Alana Willis and beautiful, hugely talented. And at some point during the rehearsals, my first night was in Aylesbury, which is a fantastic theatre. And um, uh, at some point during rehearsals, someone said, do you know who her grandma was? This little girl playing Gretel, one of the three Gretel. I was like, no, who? She went, Scylla Black. I was like, that's Scylla Black. Willis, of course. Scylla, Bobby, you know. And... Um, <laughs> I was like, I had no idea. I had no idea. So the idea of Scylla the Musical was out and it was been written, but no one had had a conversation with me. And so, you know, when the, when like the adults pick up the kids at stage door, yeah. Alana's, Alana's dad, Robert, very good friend of mine now, Scylla's son, yeah. um, was picking her up at stage door. And so we'd both be kind of like chatting a little bit about this project, Scylla, that may or may not happen. And, you know, we couldn't say, am I going to do it? He couldn't say, you're going to do it. And mean, meanwhile, we're, you know, I'm working with Scylla's granddaughter. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, the fate clouds were already kind of hovering above. And so wow. a a a Aylesbury was the last theatre that uh, uh, Scylla performed in. She cut the ribbon of the theatre and she did a panto there, right? So... The opening night of The Sound of Music, Alana um, is playing Gretel in The Sound of Music. So the place that Scylla or Robert saw the curtain come down, the last theatre that his mum performed at, curtain comes down, is the first place that the curtain goes up on his daughter, her granddaughter. Oh, you can't write that shit. That is you can't write that shit. And so... After the tour finished, you know, we were very, very close as a family and we all missed each other. And uh, they unveiled a statue for Scylla in Liverpool down the road and Kevin, uh, mm -hmm. Kevin walks. And Alana came up and I was invited to go along. And it was the first time my wife, you know, because I hadn't seen Alana, so big hugs and big hugs with Robert. How you doing? All that Aww. stuff. I was always t I was telling my missus how, how close we all were. And she could see. That, that sound and music family was real, real kind of bedded. And so I was very fortunate that that continued into Scylla. So, um, yeah, you can't write that kind of stuff. No, That's the magic of theatre. Yeah, That's not. the magic of theatre. Yeah, definitely. Now, your last three questions of this quiz. It's all right. We're all right. The first, the first of the three is when Maria made the children's new clothes, what did she Oh, do? I forgot we're on, a, we're on a quiz. We're on a quiz. I forgot we're on a quiz. Yeah. yeah. So when Maria made the, yeah, that was. Friends. The next one. What is Captain Von Trapp's first name? I've made these easy for you, Ian. <laughs> yeah, these are really easy. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> consider. I, I think I've performed it, you know, three hundred times. So I really should know what my character's first name is. Okay. Georg. Is yeah. Name. And the last one. That was to this point. I was like, okay, what can I actually ask? Um, who wrote the music? Look, okay, they, they, they had, um, I was reading it, I was reminded that it was um, 
the anniversary of David Bowie's death, I think mm-hmm. today or yesterday, wasn't it? I think it was five years since he died. Yeah. And I remember saying, you know, when you get on Facebook and it puts up a memory of what you were doing you yeah. know, a few years ago. And, and on the day he died, I'd written, um, David Bowie, he, he did what he came here to do and he did it brilliantly. And boy, oh boy, did Rogers and Hammerstein do what they came here to do yeah. and do it brilliantly. Yeah. I mean, mate, you'd have been happy. You know, think of musicals today, Ratatouille and, and, and you know, lots of yeah. them. That's so good. Great songs, all that kind of stuff. You know, you like, I'm trying to think like of an the... example. You can't, I mean, think of, think of the songs in The Sound of Music, you know, e- even, even before you get that eternal melody of the hills are alive, you've got this, my days in the hill. You'd be happy with that. You'd be happy with the intro <laughs> intro for let's start at the very big. That's just an intro to yeah. one song. Um, the 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 um, sixteen seventeen reprise when um, Liesel talks to Maria, sings to Maria. You know, take your time, don't grow up. How do they write that? It's incredible. Oh, every yeah. single song, every single yeah, bar fantastic. is just gold, you know. And there's a there's a big clue that 50, 60 years on, it's still it's still been performed. And there's lots of shows like this. And it's such a great time for musical theatre. You know, there are so many important shows out there, obviously Hamilton, yeah. you know, uh, 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 you know, Jamie, um, Evan Hansen, these shows, you know, theatres, and it's it's a crime that we've not been able to you know, do so much, but we yeah. will, we'll be back. And it's just as people like you and there's, you know, there's so much passion for musical theater now. Um, it's cool again. It, it is, it really is. I don't, is it ever not cool? I don't know. I mean, I just think it's just, uh, yeah, I think it wasn't for a bit. I mean, obviously in our circle, you know, it's just what we do. And we're very lucky, you know, in, in, in show business. In we think we're theater. cool, but everyone else is like, yeah, but you know what I mean? That shows like, I mean, Jamie's been made into a mu- uh, film, you know, that would yeah, happen. Yeah, we were there for the filming ago. of the last day for that. Oh, well, yeah, my mate was in that. But um, yeah, that's a, good, that's a great show. You know, uh, Groundhog Day, you know, all these really important stuff, you know. Um, and, you know, it, it, Lem is still, still the one, still the one, you know. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, it's very, 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 very... Still gets uh, very yeah, yeah, and there's beautiful scores out there that you know people forget. I mean, Secret Garden should have happened last year, you know, at the Palladium, and the, yeah. you listen to the music. My son was the cast as Colin, you know, and oh, the music in that is just melts you. Musical theatre is an art form, and it's uh, it's so great that it's more available than ever before. Absolutely, they just got to keep the ticket prices down. Yes, please. gets a bit pricey, doesn't it? Please. Mm. But apart from that, that is what's actually, your role then? What's, what's, what's role? the role that you most want to play? Do you know? I was really thinking about this. I'm I'm quite partial to like either Jesus, Jesus or Judas in in Superstar. I'm, I Can you hit Gethsemane? I, I've done that. Yeah. So have you interviewed well, an, uh, um, um, J- um, Joel Harper? Have you interviewed I Joel? Think. Do you know who he is? You hear him sing Gethsemane. He was uh, touring with Kinky Boots recently, but he's uh, he's oh, a talented God. one. Yeah, I yeah. To, so I need to get him. His Gethsemane was phenomenal. And you did Glenn Carter. Yes, I did. I did. I watched that one, yeah. Wow. But he's been going for like 400 years. He, he has a lot of work. He does a lot of work yeah. with, with Bill Bill Kenwright. He's a very spiritual man as well, you know. Yeah. I, I assume that when you play that part, something must stay inside you, you know, but Definitely. Uh, I, 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 I can just about sing Judas. I can't sing Jesus though. They're hard, but I'm, I'm great not, roles though. I'm easy taking either of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, used to be like that with Valjean and Javert. I love either. Yeah, we'll take anything. We'll all take anything right now. Yeah. But, but apart from that, that is that is everything. So I want to thank you for coming. Great. I also want to remind everyone that although we're having a nice chat, there's also going to be a link down below to donate to Acting for Others because that is so important for this time. I think the support they that, give me. Very much so. It's a charity um, uh, that I've done collections for for yeah. years. You know, um, every if you're doing a tour, there's a week every year, as you're I'm sure you know, in theatre when, when, when we do collections and stuff. And I've been invited to a lot of acting for others 
Um, in fact, all mo most of my Christmas presents this year, the, the bulk of them were acting for others. You know, the um, show must go on mug. Yeah. I bought dozens of them for people and uh, notepads and the pencils. So, oh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's an industry when the highs are high and the lows are low and it's, it's been hard and cold out there. And so things like this are really, really important. And so uh, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. And again, that's My a thank pleasure. you for everyone for watching the episode. And a thank you for you for coming in. It's been really, Anytime. really great chatting with you. But thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.